On this week's episode of Bayou Wild TV... South Louisiana. The beating heart of our sportsman's paradise. Formed by the Mississippi and fed by its waters. And among its treasures, located just west of Lake Pontchartrain and south of Lake Maurepas, the Maurepas Swamp. Once a thriving forested freshwater ecosystem, a haven for fish and waterfowl, an area where people have lived and laughed and played for generations, a place that connects us to something bigger than ourselves. But what many people don't realize is that much of this vital wetlands has been in decline for centuries, and the Maurepas Swamp has paid the price. Disconnected by levees from the fresh water it needs, deprived of land-building sediment and critical nutrients, and damaged by salt water intrusion that originates in the Gulf of Mexico and moves across Lake Pontchartrain and into Lake Maurepas. And entire wildlife patterns are changing with diminishing fish stocks and migratory birds now passing over the habitat they once valued. But today, a project from Louisiana's Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority is designed to breathe new life into this treasured resource. With a five and a half mile channel that starts near Garyville, Louisiana, the Mississippi River can reconnect to the Maurepas Swamp. With the power to convey up to 2,000 cubic feet per second of nutrient, sediment, and oxygen-rich fresh water, designed with unique outfall features to disperse the life-giving water exactly where it's needed. So that natural processes return as they should. Rich soil grows vertical land, and the swamp can thrive once more. Here in the Maurepas Swamp, we're restoring the lifeblood that a healthy, functioning swamp needs, so that over time, what we've lost is welcome to return. Closed captioning made possible by Explore Kayak Adventure Company. Fishing, sightseeing to photography tours, everything to make your paddling adventure happen. See Explore Kayak Adventure Company on Facebook and Instagram. Every day, we strive to preserve traditions that have spanned generations. Around every turn of the bayou, Mother Nature reveals unique people, places, and experiences and the bounty of animals and fish. Well, in Louisiana, we just call that land yak. I'm Don Dubuque. I'm Chris Lacombe. I'm Captain Martha Spencer. Join us as we document the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. We're now more than 10 years removed from the disastrous deep water horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. The state of Louisiana is starting to see some massive restoration projects directly funded by the penalties paid by BP and other companies after the spill. In past Bayou Wild episodes, we've highlighted barrier island endeavors and restoration projects like the one at Elmer's Island and the one at Whiskey Island. We also visited Queen Bess Island near Grand Isle, a critical nesting ground for Louisiana's brown pelican and another site of island restoration, enhancement, and recreational opportunities. But the Salty Coast is not the only area of Louisiana that is in need of a habitat boost.
If you've driven between Baton Rouge and New Orleans down Interstate 10 or Airline Highway, you know where we are. We're in the Blind River in the middle of the Marpaw Swamp. This is a place where one of the largest coastal restoration projects in Louisiana history is gonna take place using money from the Deepwater Horizon oil spill that took place 10 years ago. Morapaw Swamp is a massive area of old growth Cypress Tupelo Swamp nestled between Baton Rouge and New Orleans that separates Lake Morapaw from the Mississippi River. The swamp was once connected to areas that were flooded annually by the river, but it was isolated by levees more than a century ago. The natural hydrology of the swamp has been interrupted by roadbeds and spoil banks from oil and gas canals. We're fishing here um, in a place called the Bourgeois Canal, which is in the middle of the Marpaw Swamp, right off the Blind River. Uh, we are almost halfway between, do halfway between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. What happens in this area is the water has a ten tendency to stagnate because you don't have a lot of flushing uh, of, of, of new water coming in from other, from other areas. So it's a decent place to fish, but it's not a great place to fish. We're going wild to table with Louisiana Fish Fry Products and Bayou Wild TV. In Louisiana, the calendar year is celebrated by a different set of seasons. There's football season, hunting season, Mardi Gras season, and the most important, crawfish season. Catching crawfish can be an entertaining time with friends and family, but it's also an important industry for Louisiana's economy. Did you know that up to 150 million pounds of crawfish are harvested annually in the state of Louisiana? Now, with a sack full of freshly harvested Louisiana mud bugs, it's time to fire up the burner and prepare a perfect batch of crawfish in a few easy steps. First, in a large pot, bring two to three gallons of water to a boil. Then add an entire package of your favorite Louisiana fish fry products boiling mixes. Kick up the flavor with an herbal overload, zesty citrus or smashed garlic boost by adding one of the new Boil Booster blends. Bring the water to a rolling boil before adding your crawfish. After a quick four minute boil, turn off the burner and let your crawfish soak. Remember, the longer they soak, the spicier your crawfish will get. There's no better way to revel in the Bayou culture than a wild-to-table crawfish boil with Louisiana Fish Fry products. For more great recipes, visit louisianafishfry.com. Don't be that guy, unregistered who catches a tag bass, misses out on cash, a boat, or a truck. Don't be that guy. Sign up today at 
FastCashBash.com. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Continuing this week's episode, we once again focus our attention on keeping Sportsman's Paradise intact not just for ourselves, but for future outdoorsmen. And one area of the state that needs a shot in the arm is the Maurepas Swamp. Here at the Center for River Studies in Baton Rouge, the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority has a plan in the works to reintroduce the Maurepas Swamp to its original breath of life, the Mississippi River. Tell us a little bit about the background on this project. Uh, you know, how long has it been in development and, and really just broadly, what are the ambitions and the goals of, of this project? Well, it's been around for 20 years and. I think the first thing to understand is actually the name of the project, I'm going to correct you, is the River Reintroduction in the Marpaw Swamp. What we're doing is bringing the river back to the swamp. The swamp um, for, de- for hundreds of years was fed and nourished by the river and about a hundred years ago when we built the levee systems it got cut off from the river. And the true essence of this is reconnecting the river to a dying swamp. I want to bring fresh water, nutrients, fine sediments and you're going to see a really great ecological response once it's built. Give folks an idea of, of how this system would have behaved before the levees. Would things like the Blind River or some of the other natural waterways out there have had a connection to the Mississippi River? Correct, those were all natural distributaries. And, and one of the tricky things about a swamp is um, they take forever to, to build and live and they take a long time to die. So people might not see, um, see right away when they drive past an I-10 and see all those cypress trees, the swamp is still there, but it's really, really unhealthy. It's different from normal wetland loss that we see when you out fishing in the marsh and you see marsh erosion and it becomes open water. When a swamp dies, the trees get unhealthy, the canopy opens up and it starts to transition into some open uh, freshwater marsh. And that's what we're seeing. So it's a slow, slow habitat change. It's not sudden. Um, and that's, that's what's been happening over the past hundred years. With this reintroduction of water from the river, It is suggested that approximately 45,000 acres of imperiled swamp will slowly come back to life, limiting saltwater intrusion brought by hurricanes and improving habitat for all local fish and wildlife. What is so important about this area in particular? I know it's right between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. It's a, it's a large, expansive area, but geographically, culturally, what's so important about this swamp? Well, it's, it's one of the largest freshwater swamps in the state besides the Atchafalaya, so it's a, it's a huge asset ecologically. Um, as we know, wetlands provide protection for, uh, for, for hurricanes and storms. There's a recently uh, funded levee project called the West Shore Lake Pine Strain Levee, and this project is very close in proximity to that, and they're going to work together to restore wetlands and protect uh, protect from storm surge from the uh, from the levee project. What are some of the animals that could benefit from this? Uh, you know, you look at ecologically, you know, the, the the type of creatures that inhabit this swamp. What are some of the animals that are going to see the most immediate benefit from this? Probably the most immediate is going to be the fish, because we are going to flush that stagnant water out the day we turn the diversion on. You're going to see the immediate response to the water quality and the, uh, the, the uh, you know, fresher, more oxygenated water in the system. Now over time as the habitat changes, it, it should be more beneficial to the wildlife that use the area. That's why this is not a great place to come catch crawfish, you know? Um, it's not a great place to be a commercial fisherman. Uh, not like the Atchafalaya Basin is. 
uh, because you don't have those annual floods of, of, of bringing that fresh oxygenated water and recharging the life cycle of this place. You don't get that here. These massive reintroduction projects bring together several partners throughout the process, from concept to completion. Louisiana Speaker of the House Representative Clay Schecksnyder knows the importance of this area to the state. He also invests personal interests in this region. I'm Clay Schecksnyder, State Representative, District 81 Speaker of the House which includes Livingston, Ascension, St. James, and St. John Parishes. I grew up on this water. I grew up out here fishing, hunting, skiing. For us as a family, this was our, this was our Florida vacation every summer. And uh, my grandfather was a game warden in this area for 30 something years. But he used to tell me stories of when he would come, it was much more fertile back here. You had water moving through here that came from the Mississippi. Broad areas of low oxygen water filled with invasive vegetation like water hyacinth and salvinia have replaced healthy swamps full of native submerged vegetation and the oxygen rich water needed to support healthy fisheries. My grandfather would tell stories of navigating this swamp and walking through it and, and catching poachers and stuff. Well, you can't walk this swamp now. This swamp, this swamp has no bottom, it's rotten. And uh, that's the part that devastates, that devastates me more than anything is the, the bad side of it. So you can see how the habitat transitions a little bit in here. You, your cypress canopy has kind of died back off. Some of your cypress trees and your, your gum trees have died in here. And what you start getting is, you know, that, that root structure that's holding this soil together gets a little bit weaker. But you start getting a lot of grasses growing here. You can see also all the invasive hyacinths and things like that that are in here. But what happens when that, you know, when that area starts turning into grass here, a lot of times it'll start floating. You start getting floating marsh out here because the trees just aren't that healthy anymore. Uh, and so one of the things that the diversion wants to do is try to keep these trees alive so that so much of this habitat doesn't start converting uh, into floating marsh and into grass areas. Because those grassy areas just don't provide the same kind of habitat and the same kind of protection uh, that this, this healthy cypress tupelo swamp would provide. An added benefit for sportsmen and women is that much of the positive impacts will be on public land managed by Louisiana's Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. We're here in what's called the Petty A Meat, the Little A Meat River, which connects to the Blind River, and all of this is part of the Marpaw Swamp. Uh, this is an area that's going to be influenced by the diversion that comes in. And the cool thing about this is it's all public land. Uh, this is all part of the Maurepaw Swamp Wildlife Management Area. Uh, the entire management area is over 100,000 acres in size. Uh, and it got a little bit larger after the oil spill because some of the penalty monies were used to acquire some more property to increase the size of the management area and make more public land out here. There's a lot of deer hunting activity that takes place here. It used to be a great place to duck hunt, uh, but like a lot of places in Louisiana, the habitat's falling apart. Uh, and it just doesn't attract the birds like it used to. Uh, but it's all publicly accessible. And about half of the management area is in what's called the footprint of the diversion project. So they expect the diversion to have a positive influence on about half of the property out here. So almost 50,000 acres will be affected by that diversion coming in.
We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. Dreams to provide hope, to provide spiritual healing and strength, to provide moments of happiness and relief in the hardest of times. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join huntofalifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit huntofalifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference. Looking for cleaner energy? Propane can do that. When you are cooking with clean, affordable propane, you're cooking with gas. In the wintertime, nothing heats a home like Louisiana propane. And when you need hot water, propane's got you covered. Oh, and you won't regret that propane generator when the power goes out. Fuel for our future. I'm Miss Louisiana Courtney Hammonds. For more information and to find a propane dealer near you, visit louisianapropane.com. One of the reasons why Double D has been around for 50 years is because we are consistent with what built the business. And we go to great lengths to make sure that when you bring a, a deer or a hog or whatever it may be, your meat stays your meat all the way through the process. But we want to be as true to the original intent, which is a local meat company. And, and that's something that we want to maintain for as long as the Lord lets us do it. It's time! Time to register for the summer-long CCA STAR. STAR is Louisiana's largest fishing tournament with 25 divisions and over $500,000 in prizes up for grabs. And new this year, any CCA members who have their STAR ticket before May 1st will be entered to win a brand new 195 XTS Nautic STAR paired with a Mercury 115 four-stroke and trailer. You have to be in to win. Register today at CCASTAR.com. Delta Marina is Plaquemines Parish fishing one-stop. Get live bait, fuel, ice, tackle, and marine supplies. Then launch into the world's most productive saltwater fishing. Return to the fishing cleaning station, relax in first-class cabins overlooking the bayou, all in Delta Marina's safety video monitored parking lot. Need a fishing charter guide? Delta Marina can hook you up. Cook your catch in your kitchenette or dine in the upstairs restaurant. Visit Delta Marina for a day or a week. Stop in just off Highway 11 down Rosemary Drive in Empire. Visit the deltamarina.com. Closed captioning is brought to you by Global Outdoors. Find your next adventure and share your experiences with others by downloading the Global Outdoors mobile app or visiting globaloutdoors.com. Paul Swamp is a place that means a lot to me personally and it means a lot to the folks in this part of Louisiana in the Ascension Parish area, St. James Parish area. It's a place where a lot of us grew up hunting and fishing. Personally, I grew up duck hunting not more than a few miles from here. We deer hunted in this swamp. There were a lot of generations of folks who commercial fished in this swamp. But the problem with this area is over the last three to four decades, the habitat has really started to collapse. You've had a lot more invasive aquatic species move in here. You don't have the good oxygenated water that you once had when this area was connected to the Mississippi River. And therefore, it's just an area that's not as productive as it once was. This diversion project here at Maurepaw Swamp uh, is not really to be confused with some of the large scale sediment delivery projects that are being built, say down below New Orleans. Uh, this is really about keeping this swamp alive. We were told over and over again that this wasn't going to happen, but with the help of Garrett Graves and, and, and Governor uh, Jindal and, and Governor Edwards, these projects have been so much, so much more important to us as a state. It makes me feel good that, that we're all fighting the same way and moving forward. I know it takes time and I tell people all the time it's kind of like a ship at sea. You know, a ship at sea, it takes a long time for that ship to turn, 
Well, we're turning that ship. That ship's starting to turn now, and you're starting to see these projects come to life. And that's where we are. So. What about funding? Where's the funding coming from, and, and what kind of time frame are we look at in terms of construction? The majority of the funding from this project is actually coming from Deepwater Horizon oil spill monies. Just one year ago, in February of 2020, we had a great uh, announcement here at the Center for River Studies with Governor Edwards that we received $130 million from the Restore Act to construct the project. Now, we can't use those monies until we finish design and more importantly, have all of our environmental compliance. So right now, this, this next year, we're gonna be working towards finishing design, getting environmental compliance done and securing all of our land rights. And we hope that in 2022, we're advertising for construction to build this, this awesome project. How can the public stay engaged uh, with the Coastal Protection Restoration Authority and get more information about this project as you move towards construction? Uh, we have some, some links on our webpage. There's always a good place to go and we can provide those to folks. We're, we're probably planning on having some public meetings in, in, uh, later in 2021. We work closely with the legislature, we work with the folks on the federal side, and then any of those folks are great assets to find out more about the project. The conservation of Maurepas Swamp, using the restorative power of the Mississippi River, may prove to be one of the wisest investments of oil spill penalties thus far especially given the long-term benefits to hunters, anglers, and local communities. If you love Louisiana, this is, look around, this is what Louisiana is. It's about being outdoors. It's about the hunting and fishing and growing up. These are things that if we don't start protecting these things, we're gonna lose them. And, and shame on us, that's on us for not doing it. So whether you're in it or not, you need to be a part of fixing these problems. As sportsmen in the sportsman's paradise, we feel a connection to the rich natural areas surrounding us, where we live, work, and play. It is one of our main responsibilities to maintain the habitat, which tells each story of adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage of Bayou Wild.